Hey there, welcome to Live By Design, a place where I hope you'll find content that is informative, inspiring, and insightful. I'm your host, Moira Devinga, a life coach and a motivational speaker, and I'm happy to be here with you. I've been gone for a while. I'm here in Boston, and uh, uh, my mom was having some um, health challenges, and you know, fortunately for me, I come from a family where our, my siblings are all on point. So. We share the responsibility equally, and you know, no one ever feels, hopefully, you know, overly burdened because it's not a burden. She is my mother, our mother, um, but it did take some time, and so I'm back now, refocused, and picking up a few things that I allowed to sort of fall by the wayside. And one of those things that I have not have not been doing as regularly as I had hoped to be doing this year, at least not this month, is being in this space to talk to you all. And I'm happy to be here now. I'm not sorry about that because you know. My mother comes first. Um, at the same time, though, it is nice to sort of be here. And, you know, what an interesting time I've been having since the last time I was in this space. I want to talk today about the importance of cultivating the courage to have fierce conversations. Cultivating the courage to have fierce conversations. And this idea of fierce conversations is pretty simple. Um, I didn't start it. I'm not the first one to coin it. I first heard Ianla Van Zandt use this term. And really what a fierce conversation is, at least how I've come to um, define it for myself, is just a conversation where people are uh, set an intention to be courageously kind and honest and, and, and compassionate but really, really honest and creating authentic interactions where um, people leave the experience, maybe emotionally exhausted, hopefully not feeling like they were beat up, but definitely feeling as though they were heard and that the conversation had a completeness. A completeness. It had an end point so that um, the parties that have this fierce conversation walk away feeling that they were each heard, maybe not necessarily understood, but seen, heard, acknowledged, and that there is agreement that whatever the outcome is going to be, it's going to be, and that neither party is going to feel a need to go and gossip to this other person or debrief with the other person and spread it all around. And, you know, one of the things that you all know I do is that, you know, I, I teach yoga. I'm a yoga teacher. And also being a life coach, I'm in the space of people on a regular basis who are trained and who teach others to be honest, to be authentic, to be open, to be present, and a whole lot of other things that I think have become now um, cliche in our society. And in these last couple of weeks, I've had several conversations in a professional realm and in a personal realm whereby um, I felt that the people with whom I have been engaging have not been direct and honest. I've had conversations where um, you know individuals, individuals have come to me to complain about other individuals in areas that are really not really their business. Because you know here my mantra is always you know mind your business, and you know I've pushed back and have said to people who've come to me to vent, complain, or whatever about, about other folks. Um, number one. It's not your business. Mind your business uh, if it's not impacting you. And if you're not willing to go back and talk to that person and give them this feedback that you're giving me, we need to drop it because I'm not into gossip. I'm not into any of that stuff. And I've also come to an awareness um, that, you know, people in my professional circle um, who, quite frankly, I expected a little bit more from, and then now, in retrospect, I realize that actually things are playing out exactly as they're supposed to. Um, but who, again, also have a real hard time having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with the person or the people with whom they have a problem or um, a concern or a question, and instead go all around and you know take their business and complain to, to other people. What we know to be true, this is natural law, is that the truth will always out. So, uh, you know, in some cases, you know, the gossip got back to me. In some cases, it was carried to me intentionally by people who sort of, who I'm close to, who were like, you know, I think you need to know A, I think you need to know B or C. Um, in other cases, you know, um, people have, you know, said things in my presence and then gone outside of my presence and said something else to somebody else 
that was not consistent, right, with what they said to me when they were in my presence, not realizing that the person to whom they were speaking was going to come back and tell me what they said in the first place, right? So it's just interesting to me that, you know, people try so hard to um, sort of compartmentalize and be um, discreet and be secretive and be, you know, in some cases, you know, dare for want of a better phrase, a little bit two-faced in how they interact, but it always comes out. It always comes back, which is why I, you know, now in my 50s and hopefully a little bit more mature than I was in my 30s, have really set a clear intention about being direct, honest, and open in my communication, um, not allowing people to come and vent or just sort of gossip without then turning the mirror back around on them and saying two things. What did you do to contribute to this, how we got here? Or what did you not do? You know, what actions did you take or not take that got us here? What was your contribution? And are you willing to go back to that person and have this dialogue with them? Because if you're not willing to take personal responsibility and if you're not willing to summon the courage to go talk to the person um, that you felt was the, 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 you know, the, the transgressor or the offender, then we're not having conversation. Here's the thing. My really good friend, she's my best friend, she's like my sister, my soul sister, Rita Spinola. Y'all, he would talk about Spinola all the time. If anything goes down with anything that I'm doing, and I call Spinola, and I'm like, she'll give me like maybe a minute, two minutes to just go off. I can't believe so-and-so did so-and-so, and such and such. You know, I get mad too. Don't get it twisted. Um, and Spinola will listen. She'll do a little bit of, oh, really? Oh, my goodness, I can't believe that. And then almost like clockwork, she'll be like, what, can I offer you something? And then I have to steal myself. I have to get ready because I know it's coming. She's about to pick up that mirror, turn it around, push it in my face and ask me, Marty, what was your contribution? And part of the reason that I call Spinola is because I know she's going to do that. You know, maybe 15, 20 years ago, I'll never forget it. We were in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn Academy of Music and we were going to an event and I had a conflict with one of my friends and I brought it to, up to her and then she immediately did that. I was not ready in my consciousness at that time to receive the kind of feedback and the kind of interaction that she was about to offer me in terms of turning the mirror around. I'll never forget it. And at one point I looked at her and I said, you always have to turn everything into a social work conversation. And that hurt her feelings. She told me, I don't, I don't remember... Spin all if you're watching, you gotta remind me. I don't remember if she told me in that moment or if she told me later, but that was my reaction because at that time I had not gotten to the place where I really understood the importance of fierce conversations. I understood the importance of um, taking personal responsibility and the importance of looking at all situations as an opportunity for my own growth, my own consciousness expansion, right? I wasn't there yet. So I said that it was kind of snarky and nasty um, and it did hurt her feelings. And she eventually did tell me and I did apologize for it, but that's where I was. Fast forward now 15, 20, maybe 25 years, that's how I roll too. And that's why we're so cool together as friends because if I'm feeling upset, you know, angry, dismissed, and that whatever, I go back to her. She'll, you know, she'll listen to me for like a good minute or two and give me a little bit of just that little space to breathe and be like, you know, get it out. And then inevitably, she picks it up and turns it around back to me because what she knows to be true and what I know to be true is that, first of all, everything that happens to us is happening for us. And so when people are making you mad or making you upset or doing things to offend you, rather than, you know, what the natural impulse to do is, is to lash out and go into response and defense mode, the, 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 the um, more enlightened thing, the more spiritually, I think, uh, fulfilling thing, the thing that allows the growth to come into your space is to... Deal with it, suck it up, feel it, experience it, but then ask yourself, how can I grow from this? How did I contribute to it? How can I grow from this? And if necessary, how can I turn it around? You know, I, I posted on Instagram earlier today that what you, everybody takes a misstep. We all take the wrong step. We all take a misstep. The problem is, though, people keep walking in the same direction of that misstep once they even have, after they first, you know, recognize the mistake that they've made, they keep going in the same direction. And what I said this morning on, on Instagram is that once you make the or have the awareness that you took a step in the wrong direction, don't keep walking in that direction. Turn yourself around and course correct. And we've gotten to the place in the society, I think, at least what I'm observing with people, people don't want to take responsibility for the role that they may or may not have played in, in a breakdown or an upset or miscommunication. And 
rather and when they're receiving something from somebody that is not kind or loving or supportive or maybe is even borderline nasty the immediate immediate impulse is to go into response mode and i know that i can see it because i used to do that too you come for me i'm going to come back for you but i'm going to come back for you twice as hard you come back for me and hurt my feelings you're going to be in the ground you say something that makes me feel uncomfortable i'm going for the jugular so you are on the floor you're not getting back up that was me reaction 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 and I remember over the years, people have made observations about my behavior. I've talked about this here before. You know, they've called me ju judgmental and all other kinds of things. And rather than listening to it, receiving, asking myself, is it true? And if so, what can I do to turn it around? I just turn it around back on them. And there were a couple of conversations that I've had here and there. My good friend, Dwight Roden, and I mentioned this um, a couple of months ago, maybe a year or two ago. You know, we had a conversation where he had some real insights about my um, some some personal behaviors and um, that I wasn't even aware that I had. I didn't lash out at him, but I didn't receive them. I sort of brushed them off. And it wasn't until several years later that I was like, oh, Dwight was right. Or, oh, my sister was right. You know, about the different things that they saw that I didn't see. And so now where I am now, or what I'm grateful for, is that I've developed um, a discipline, I've developed a habit, whereby when somebody comes to me and says, why do you hurt my feelings? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Whatever. Even if it doesn't feel good in the moment, and even if I might get a little up, a little upset. I don't allow myself to stay in that space that long because I want to hear the feedback. I want to have that fierce conversation so that as a, if there's an opportunity for me to grow, something for me to, for me to learn, something that I can change to lift my own consciousness, I want to hear that. But we don't do that anymore. Instead, we hide behind emails. We hide behind, um, we hide behind uh, mysterious uh, innuendo on social media, and I've seen people actually, you know, say to me, "What can I put on post? What can I post on social media so so and so know I'm talking about him, or so and so know I'm talking about her?" Rather than picking up the phone and calling so and so and saying, "Look, yo, you hurt my feelings. Or, Look, this made me mad. Or this, you know what I mean?" Instead of going directly to them, now we're going all around the mulberry bush, and um, and just not having those conversations. Or rather than coming and saying, "Why do you hurt my feelings?" I'm gonna go over here um, and tell so and so, knowing that I'll probably get back to you, but I don't have to some of the courage right to, to tell you straight to your face I can gossip about you to somebody else and I know just by na nature's law it's gonna come back up and get back to you but then I don't have to do that people will come to me and complain about so-and-so so-and-so and so did this so-and-so that said that and if I'd say well you know would you be willing to go and have a conversation with that person oh no 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 I'm not gonna do that right so the importance of fierce conversations they're healing because Whatever you hold inside, it's going to manifest. It's going to bleed all over your life. It's going to come out in some way. I just finished watching a documentary called Heal on Netflix, which I, which I thought was very interesting. Another um, movie, another documentary that talks about mind-body connection and mind-body experience um, and how our feelings, our emotions can get trapped in the body and then manifest as disease, chronic illness, that type of thing. And when we don't have fierce conversations, we're holding things in. Your blood pressure's going up, you got attitude all the time, you're tense. Whereas if you can find the courage and the tools and the words and the voice to speak what you have to speak to the people who are important to you, speak what you need to speak to the people who have offended you and be able to receive the criticism, the feedback, maybe the judgment, maybe the harshness from other people, sit in it for a moment, and then rather than lashing out and acting in kind, standing back, sitting back and saying, well, you know what? Okay, now, you know, this person's making me mad. Oh, you know, all right, I'm not, this is, I'm not feeling this right here. But what did I do? Is this an opportunity for my own growth? Is there an opportunity for me to come up higher? I look back on, you know, how I used to be really angry and really reactive and really just overly you know, snappy and ready to just pop off on anybody. That joint, that, that kind of behavior, that kind of way of that way of walking through the world is stressful. Being um, always having my back up and ready to, you know, throw around with somebody is stressful and has an impact on my health. You know, I don't get headaches. I used to get headaches back in the day and I used to not always just feel energized because I was carrying all that with me, right? And so the idea is when you develop the skills to be able to identify when you're feeling upset or, or dismissed or denied or betrayed or whatever that is and find the language to be able to express it without being abusive, without being gossipy, without being nasty and allowing the people around you to know exactly where you stand with them and creating the space to allow them to let you know, right, you know, how you're feeling about you. 
it frees you up and it grows you up and it allows you to um, let go of things more quickly, to resolve things more quickly. People will come to you in a different way and people will stop coming to you. I have a whole bunch of people now, they don't talk to me, they get mad at me now. Oh, I'm not gonna talk to Marty now. You know, she's you know she's on that whole trip because they know if you come to me, start complaining about somebody. I'm gonna say mind your business. And by the way, what are you doing? Oh, so and so did that. Okay, but what did you do? Well, I can't believe that so and so. You know, she said, well, what? What did you do? Because at the end of the day, who can you control? Yourself. What can you control? Your own circumstances. You can't control other people. And if you want to come to me to want to bingo and complain about somebody, then you best be willing and ready and able to receive the reflection that is gonna be presented back to you when I pick up that mirror and turn it around. And what I'm finding is more and more people that are ready to gossip, they're ready to talk about you, to talk about other people, to go to this person and that person, but they will not come to you. And to me, that kind of cowardice, I said cowardice, because it is, it's fear. Um, and that lack of direction is tearing everything down. It's tearing personal relationships down. It's tearing professional relationships down. I see people walking down the street on their cell phones, you know, cussing people out like they're on some kind of reality show, right? Or I see people arguing with people. You know, I have a friend of mine, I love you dearly, you know who you are. But she told me that she one time got spent four hours on Facebook last presidential election arguing with folks that she didn't even know. And girl, you know you were wrong for that. I'm like, you've got other things to do, don't you? You know, and what did that accomplish? Accomplish? And it was probably a bot, first of all, maybe not even a real person. And I don't know anybody whose mind was changed after a heated interaction on Facebook with somebody who they don't know. But we're so comfortable talking on Facebook. We're so comfortable talking on Instagram. We've gotten to the point now, like, they Yelp reviews. Um, somebody has a bad interaction with the business, and instead of going to the business owner and trying to have a conversation, they just go to Yelp, give them a one, and rash them. True story, a couple of months ago, I was in D.C., and somebody came to fix the refrigerator. And it was the worst customer experience I'd had in a long time. And I was this close to getting on Yelp. As a matter of fact, I did get on Yelp, and I saw the hair of a whole bunch of ones. One star, one star, one star, one star. People were trashing them. Right? And I was getting ready. And I said, you know what, Mwadi? Somebody stopped me somewhere. Something stopped me. And I called the company. And I found the owner, small business. And, and I didn't let her have it. But I did explain to her from a, as a one business owner to one other, I can't recommend you. And this is why. And I went down the list of all the things that happened. And I could tell when she got on the phone that, you know, she was really uptight and being very defensive. But when she heard that I was really trying to give constructive feedback and criticism and, and something that would hopefully help her in the future, she eased up. We had a good conversation on one about my business. And had I done it on Yelp, it would have been just more white noise. I would have been able to get my anger out, but it wouldn't be able to resolve something like gossip. If something goes down and you're going to the person who can fix it or change it, then that's constructive. But if something goes down at the office place, in the yoga studio, in the dance studio, whatever, and you're going to Mary, Paul, Sue, and Jack, but you're not going to the person who's in a decision-making position, then you're gossiping. And you're not contributing to change, you're contributing to the toxicity in whatever environment that you're in. In the family, same thing. In the business, wherever, right? So. My point is, you know, I know for myself, I am committed to cultivating my ability to have real fierce, fierce conversations because I leave with clarity, they make me feel good. It's really good at keeping people who just want to gossip. Folks don't come to me and gossip like they used to. And if you're somebody who people are always coming to you with the gossip, you got to look at yourself and ask you why it is that you're attracting gossipers. That's a sorry conversation. Mm. Um, because people used to, used to come to me all the time, girl, oh my God, why you would yes, da, da, da. And now they know if you go to Mwadi Bibinga, just like I know if I go to Rita Spinola, at some point she's going to say, well, what did you do? And what are you willing to do to turn it around? And people these days, they just don't want to hear that. They don't want to take personal responsibility. They want to vent and vent and vent and vent. And now what I do is, you know, if people are venting and venting and venting and venting and venting and venting, you know, I sooner or later, I'm thinking I'm running out of battery juice. Um, I, I put a pause on it. And then I make it personal for them. I find something that I know about them and I push them on that particular thing. Maybe it's a relationship issue or a business issue or a finance issue. And then when their ruffles, you know, their feathers get all ruffled, I say to them, doesn't feel good, does it? Right? And then people get mad. 
you know, and then, you know, I get talked about whatever, you know, I don't really care about that that much. But my point is that I'm in a space now, when you come to me to complain about somebody, I'm going to ask you, what did you do? When you come to me to complain about a situation, I'm going to ask you, how, I'm going to ask you, how can you change it? And if you come to me and say, why do you hurt my feelings? I'm going to hear you. If you come to me and say, why do you, you know, I don't like the last interaction that we had. I don't like what you said. I will talk to you and I will tell you what my intentions were and hopefully come to some kind of agreement. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to run down the street and around the corner and down the block when you sit right here in front of my face and we got beef. Fierce conversations require a level of maturity. Fierce conversations rely, uh, uh, require a level of courage, a willingness to be vulnerable to this person, to tell them the truth about themselves and to receive the truth about yourself without getting so hang up in, well, you did this and you did that and being able to and, and instead being able to sit back and be like oh, okay I see what you're saying maybe I don't agree with you but I still want to create a space whereby if I hurt your feelings if I do something that you think is, dis is disrespectful if you have an opinion about something that I'm doing that maybe you think is not aligned with what I said I wanted to do or who I say I wanted to be that you can come to me and we can have that conversation rather than hiding behind text messages and hiding behind emails and hiding behind social media or hiding behind gossip Fierce conversation, stand up, be the first to apologize. Fierce conversations, be the first to stand up and say, you know what, I think I might have messed up. Fierce conversations, be the first to stand up and say, I think I misunderstood you. Fierce conversations, be the first to say, you know what, I said something to you yesterday that I think that was out of line. I said something to you yesterday that I think was hurtful, and I want to apologize to you. Fierce conversation is, fake conversations is being receptive when people come to you about something that you did. Not everybody in their mama's cousin, but something that you did that left them in a state of upset or left them in a state of sadness or confusion or bitterness or anger or whatever. We've got to get to the place where we are not, you know, sending emails and forwarding emails back and forth or gossiping over here because people sometimes use gossip to build up their own sense of power and purpose and self-esteem falsely um, and talking about people behind your back and all manner of things which don't create any improvement, just but just create more stress, more drama, and more problems. And if you are having a relationship issue with whether it be a significant other, your spouse, a family member, uh, you know, my, I encourage you, my hope for you is that you find a way to break through the noise and all the foolishness and be the first to step up and say, I hear you, I see you, I apologize to you. What can we do to turn this thing, thing around? I see that I did X, Y, or Z that caused you to be angry. What can I do to make this right? I see, I want to let you know that you did X, Y, or Z that hurt my feelings, made me feel disrespectful or whatever, and I need you, you know, to let you know that I'm hurt. And then if you come back to me and say, I apologize, and how can I make it better, then I need to be big enough to say, okay, you know what, let's try to work this out. Or say, you know what? That time for me is really past. I just wanted to let you know that, but I think we need to go our separate ways. That's cool. Rather than me be getting up on Facebook and saying, oh, so-and-so said that about me. Or somebody coming to me and saying, oh, why did so-and-so call me and say, you said such and such. Or me hearing from this person, you know, and on and on and on. You get it, right? Fierce conversations. They require maturity. Fierce conversations, they require insight. The questions that you ask when you're having a fierce conversation, what is the situation? What did I do to contribute to? What did I not do that created the situation that we're in right now? And what is it that I can do to bring about a healing in this space? Fierce conversations. And sometimes what you can do is to apologize that somebody had an experience with you, maybe it wasn't your intention, and just walk away. Like, you don't always, fierce conversations don't always mean we stay together, we break bread together, we're going to, you know, still work together, whatever. But it just means that go to the source. Go to the source. Y'all, stop running around with these emails and all, you know, using all manner of nonverbal communication to get your point across. And just stand up, stand on your truth. And let people in your life know where they stand with you. And let them know directly so they don't have to hear it from any other source. Because it's almost like that game of what's it called? Phone. Telephone. If you played it in grammar school, I whisper to you, and then you whisper to the next person, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then it snowballs. And by the time it gets back to me, it don't sound like nothing what I said. Right? Fierce conversations. Be direct. Be open. Be honest. Tell the truth. And be somebody who people can tell the truth to.
be somebody that you that that they know that if they gotta come to you and tell you something hard, if they gotta tell you something that might make you uncomfortable, they know you're not gonna punch them in the face or slit their throat or go around and talk about it and trash talk them, right? You'll sit in it for a moment, maybe be a little bit uncomfortable, maybe be a little bit pissed off, even that's cool, but then regroup yourself, get it back together and say, okay, well what can we do to turn this around? Or that's not my experience. My that was not my intention. I, I'm sorry you're having that experience, but that wasn't my intention. How can we move this forward? We gotta grow up, folks. This 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 is getting out of hand. It's gotten to the point where you know people are starting to just you know kind of get on my nerves with it. So much gossiping, so much back and forth. Find the courage to dig deep, be truthful, be honest, and be able to receive the truth, be able to receive the feedback, be able to receive the criticism especially when it's warranted, so that we can all continue to grow. Find a way to make yourself emotionally and spiritually and physically available to hear what needs to be heard so that you can have the growth, so that your consciousness can expand, so the maturity can um, take root, and so that you can have more peace of mind. Right? That's my message. I hope it made sense. It made sense when I started. It made sense to me. I got a couple of people I'm going to have to call when we get off this. And call them. Don't text them. Call them. Um, that's it. Um, I'm going to see you next week. I'm back. Mom's doing much better. Family's handling their business. Got a lot going on. A lot to share with you. Still working on the one woman show. I'm going to postpone my relationships workshop just because I've been taking care of my mother and I put everything on the back burner. And that's cool. I'm comfortable with that. My priorities are straight. So, that's it. Hopefully you're having a good week. I hope the rest of your week is fabulous. I'll see you next week, I promise. And in the meantime, take care of yourself and the people that you love. Bye, y'all.